everyone, this is Vera. Happy New Year. And as we're in this portal, on this portal day of 111, 2019, and within this eclipse corridor, I wanted to come in and give a little, a little reading, but also just I have a lot of thoughts or downloads coming in, which are, um, having to do with this recalibration that we're in and and how we are to be um, in alignment here in heaven on our earth. And um, I thought to draw a card for any old, for any fears that stem from our old wounds. And that is, um, not to say that those aren't real and that the fears have not served us. I think they probably have, at least to some degree. And then also to draw for any panics, sort of hypervigilances that we have had, but also the things we've really relied on as our strengths. And to kind of allow that to calm down, to um, become less sort of inflamed and then also the fears to make them be less I'm feeling like rigid in a way and um, and then I'm also thinking that this really relates and I, I, the two decks I brought out are the Mother's Wisdom deck and then the R Tarot from um, Sarah Shipman I really feel this also has to do with not only the divine feminine kind of becoming less disassociated. Like, I feel like there's a lot, at least for me as a female um, human who's, you know, had children and always identified as, you know, a female mammal. <laughs> um, there has been this sense of being disassociated because it's not safe to be completely resident within my physical form for various reasons, you know, within our culture and ways that women's bodies have been policed and um, harmed, violated, destroyed. Um, so both of these things to me relate that, well, just to get personal to me, I think a lot of my fear and panic and just not knowing how to deal, like not knowing how to fully be absolutely present and grounded and ground that gorgeous energy, which is myself, which is, you know, our, the inheritance of our embodiment and our spirit in you know, living on this world, the grace of that, you know. Oh, that's starting to feel a little too personal, but I think I'm going to post it anyway. I think this relates to um, the Divine Feminine. If you look back to that video I did a, about two months ago called The Rebirth of Venus, it's like getting... You'll have to look at that video, but that and that one I talk more about sexuality and like understanding the female um, in heterosexual sex, the receptivity as not a site of being conquered or being, you know, um, taken or being, you know, somehow acted upon, but that there's a deep agency to the very act of receptivity. And then also, of course, um, the possibility of gestation and births as well, but not to get too fixated on any, you know, one definition of femaleness either. Um, we all have everything within us. Every, every archetype that we relate to, that we, that we resonate with is within us, you know? Um, and we, we sort of build that understanding for ourselves. You know, I love one thing that a Kundalini teacher said or quoted, um, was, um, you know, that you have created, like you, your soul, you, the, your embodiment is your soul's creation. Um, you know. I don't want to get too far off into things that I can't really put into words, but there's something I wanted to share about also the divine feminine coming into being able to love herself in a way that is not panicked, that is not fearful and to ground and, and, you know, part of why I have fear of money is it's been used as a tool also to control, you know, for men to control women under patriarchy, for the rich to control the poor, you know, different ethnic 
and racial groups to <laughs> enslave each other, um, you know, or um, just it's been used in a lot of ways, even though, you know, you can think of and it's helpful for me to think of energy as like a flow of sort of life force. It's it's been used in destructive ways and rigid ways um, and, and in just ways. Um, OK, so I've gone on several tangents. I also want to say in terms of the one. 11 portal today that I think coming into this self knowledge and this is all can be happening you know it's not like strictly like here's Barbie here's Ken and this is happening you know I, I love Patricia McNeely <laughs> um, and she doesn't stick with strict gender um, experiences either but okay there's something to do with the divine feminine being able to love the divine masculine without fear and without panic. And then there's something also about the divine masculine then being able to receive that. And, you know, there's all sorts of other things going on, but as Marla Kelly said in her Instagram today, you know, we each bring and share what we, what we can. And so I, I wanted to share today some of what I've been thinking. So the card for panic, I got the two of pentacles. So it's some way of balancing, you know, our inventiveness, our inventiveness and our magic. You know, she's very glamorous. Glamour is magic. Glamour is also related to the word grammar. So it's, you know, like casting spells with language is the way we speak. And then of course she, Hedy Lamar not only was an actress, but also an inventor, you know, that led us to so much of what we have today that we just rely on daily for technology. Um, so yeah, some sort of integration of magic and technology in a different way with a, you know, just, you know, over a few degrees, some slightly different or deeper or, or richer or higher or lower, you know, some slightly recalibrated way of understanding our magic and the way in which we you know, people talk about manifesting, but to me, it's also really a lot about just being embodied. Like, how do we deal with the fact that we're in this body? How do we deal with these things that are around us? How do we create? How do we bring that magic spark of imagination and idea and then make something with it or speak it into being? And how do we take care with this? And how do we let this be a flow of love? And, and let there be justice for all within the, that economy. So that it's a true economy that actually, you know, gives value to what each person is contributing rather than assigning value to like, this is what you might contribute and the value that would be assigned to it or the value that's just assigned to you by the virtue of the family and the neighborhood and whatever you were born into. This, we know your actual value. Each person is limitlessly precious and so how do we create an economy and a society that acknowledges that that celebrates that that embodies that okay and look this is listening listening look at this I mean this to me this is you know this shows a a, a mature woman in a and a little well, it's not clear that this is a boy child, but like a, a child, but like, anyway, whoever the figures are, this is from the Mother's Wisdom deck, so of course it's a mother and a child, but whoever you are and whoever you're speaking with, and whoever, as I said on Instagram the other day, are the important companions of your daily life how to hold that space, which can be tricky too in our busy, 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 busy economy, to listen, to listen to yourself, to listen to another, to listen to the earth. And that's, you know, that is part of why we are here embodied, to listen to our own pulse the pulse of the earth, the pulse of it, beloved.